following is an ESPN special presentation. We are the spirits of the forum. Bring us the cup. Remember what we have done. Join us in sports' most storied lineage. Remember those who have led us. Bring us the cup. Remember who we are. What we have accomplished. Remember who you represent. Receive the torch. Join us that generations may seek to emulate. Accept your challenge. Fulfill our destiny. Bring us the cup. The team wasn't even here on Monday night, but over 17,000 were on hand at the Forum. And after the game, they were on the street, St. Catharines, to celebrate. Tonight, they'll be inside because the Montreal Canadiens could take the big skate with the Stanley Cup. Hello, everybody. Gary Thorne, Bill Clement, and welcome. Stanley Cup final continues here at the Forum in Montreal. The question is, can the Kings stop it at least for one game? Well, Gary, their playoff ship is officially taking on water. The first order of business for the L.A. Kings in this hockey game has to be getting the puck by Patrick Waugh. He has been sensational and will be the MVP if the Canadians clinch. How confident is he? Watch what he did right there to Tomas Sandstrom in game four after making a save on him. He is that confident. The L.A. Kings have to drive the net. They have not done that well since game one. Worst case scenario for the L.A. Kings, even if they don't score, they will be able to draw penalties. They have to drive the net to try to take something away from Patrick Waugh. Every game now is a must game for the Los Angeles Kings, and if they don't get it here, it is all over. We'll be back. Will it be the night? We'll see the Kings and the Canadians coming up. Tonight's ladies' night, and there's a special on Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Oh, no, it's Ted from accounting. The crowd seems ready. It's a beautiful spring evening, perfect for a doubleheader. Domino's pepperoni cheddar doubleheading. Buy a large pepperoni pizza at regular price and get an extra layer with cheddar cheese and extra pepperoni free. A pepperoni cheddar doubleheader. He steps up to the box. It's a long one. It's going, going, gone. And with every medium or large pizza order... Get your free Kool-Aid soft drink, man. A two-part pack, 30 Kool-Aid points. Something for nothing. How about that? ESPN's presentation of the Stanley Cup Finals is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Buy the new Subaru Impreza. Subaru, what to drive. And buy Canon cameras. So advanced, they're simple. Welcome back. We'll get to the Montreal Forum in just a moment. John Saunders along with Jim Schoenfeld and John Davidson. And Wayne Gretzky has done everything he can possibly do to bring L.A. the cup. The rest of the team needs to pick it up. Yeah, Wayne's a playmaker. He's done his job. His job is to get the puck to the dangerous players. Unfortunately for the Kings, their gunners are shooting blank. So I expect Wayne to have another big game. The guys that have to come up and start scoring some goals, Thomas Sandstrom, Luke Robitaille, and Yari Curry. To me, when you look ahead to this game, fellas, it's a game which Montreal can smell. When they had the Islanders in this position, they knocked them right down early and then kicked them once they got them down. Los Angeles, the two home games were very slow starting. They came back, ended up tying the games, but lost in overtime. For the Kings to do anything, they have to survive what I think will be an onslaught by Montreal in the first period. Yeah, the last two games down 3 nothing, down 2 nothing. They got overtime, but after that, it was Patrick Waugh. We'll find out what happens in Game 5. Back to the Montreal Forum to Gary and Bill. 
John, thank you very much, and welcome, everybody. And will this be it? A full house rocking and rolling already. The goaltenders, as they have been, Kelly Rudy will make the start in net. His Los Angeles Kings 13 and 10 in the playoffs. He has been in almost all of them. Those are the numbers for this series. At the other end, Patrick Waugh. Nothing short of spectacular. Number one in goals against and save percentage for the entire playoffs and even better numbers here in this one. Ready to go. Kirk Muller, Yari Curry out to take the face off. And game five is underway with the Montreal Canadiens needing one more win to take home the Stanley Cup. Marty McSorley kicks it in. Yari Curry, Curry in his own end, lumps it up the center ice. It'll be Bellows chasing it down. So it'll be Kurt Muller working on this line. Bellows with him, knocked away from Muller. Marty McSorley will take it in behind his own net. Hard around, right on the far side. Los Angeles dumping up ice. Warren Reichel got it ahead. Conacher shoots it in. Curry, Conacher, Reichel on this line. Cleared around by John LeClair. And the star studded here. I think you would have to say that the number one priority for the L.A. Kings is avoiding what they have done in the first five minutes of games two, three, and four. And that is giving the Montreal Canadiens and Jacques Demers' guys two on ones. They haven't really been burned by it. The L.A. Kings have given so many odd man rushes to the Montreal Canadiens and have yet to really be burned early. But that's living very dangerously. Barry Melrose kept his guys away from the media today, trying something different. They did not have a morning skate. They did not practice yesterday when they got here, so they are going from game three, or game four at least, right into game five. Both of these teams have seen the defense and goaltenders get the job done. They have scored 11 goals in this series for each but the three overtime wins the difference for Montreal down low Wayne Gretzky back shot Granato and a save by Waugh Tony Granato was set up by Wayne Gretzky Ronan knocked down by Zitnik cleared back to Brisebois Patrice Brisebois sends it in Dave Taylor with a bad shoulder is still out for Los Angeles Charlie Huddy is going to play believe it or not Charlie Huddy came out and warmed up remember third degree sprain of the medial collateral ligament that's a big time sprain but he had a special knee brace shipped in took the warm up he looked awkward Gary but he is in the lineup on the far side Brunet and Blake were going at it Breeze Bart clears it off the boards comes loose to Gretzky at center Gretzky averaging 25 minutes per game in this series final against Montreal Benoit Brunet Pinned up by Tomas Sandstrom. Sandstrom out there with Yari Curry right now in Robitaille. They get the whistle against the boards for the draw. We are just underway. First period here in Montreal. Sandstrom has to produce for the LA Kings to win. Luke Robitaille, 63 goals in the regular season. They need him. And of course, Wayne Gretzky has to weave his magic once again to avoid elimination. Gretzky to Granado. A shot that Patrick Wall was ready for. How many shots has he not been ready for in this series? I can't remember, but a couple. Wayne continues to produce a dozen points in the last six games. And the fact that Sandstrom has not scored, I think, is magnified by the fact that he plays with Wayne Gretzky. It's one thing to go four games without a goal, but when you're Wayne Gretzky's regular right winger, that is a long time. Yari Curry stays out on the ice with a Robitaille on one of the wings. Cleared back to Charlie Huddy, who's out there. Gary Shuchuk, the other wing on this line. Behind the net, cutting in was Shuchuk. Taking away and cleared up for Donfus. Donfus drops it in the middle. Canadians back on the attack. LeBeau on this line with Donfus and Mike Keane. Huddy and Donfus go to the corner. Sador, LeBeau, all there. Kicking at it, Huddy, Keen, Sador's down on the ice, Keen knocks it away from him. Keen trying to center, wants a wraparound shot, spins it off the side of the net. Played by Yari Curry. Curry will get it up. The Kings have had tons of scoring chances in this series. The save made by Waugh, down goes Shuchuk, but they've not been able to convert. And even there, Gary couldn't get to the rebound. Three Montreal Canadiens back all around Gary Shuchuk. Keen able to send it in. Shots in this series, 143 to 119 in favor of Los Angeles. Over to Granado. Granado down the right side looking to the middle. Centering pass by Donnelly as it was behind him. Held in by Marcardi. Near side Granado to Donnelly. Tipped away from him in the centering pass. 
Good play by Matthew Snyder. He got a piece of that. Gary Lehman to the blue line. And Lehman the shot. That's deflected block behind the net. Held on to Gilbert Dion. Dion goes back to the Lyle Odeline. Odeline couldn't tee it up. Kelly Rudy had to kick it away. Good pressure being put on here now by Montreal. Dion going behind the net. McSorley. Dion suddenly finds himself alone. McSorley came out in front. Odeline's got it with Donnelly. Back for Dion. Dion desperately wanted to drag that out front and shoot it, but tried to go before he had it. Attempt on the kick pass comes free to Granado. Granado looking up ice, shoot Chuck Carson. Jimmy Carson in the lineup again, off for Donnelly. Donnelly, Canadians were changing it up behind the play. They get enough people back now. Wow will hang on as he pokes it away to Dion. Dion clears it around and over Blake's head. This will be chased down and will be an icing call on the touch-up by Zitnik. For him in Los Angeles, no score. Come on, let's get a cold one. Our total attendance for today's game. Oh, would you look at this beer line? I'm gonna go back. What? Foul ball? No, no, I'm not. Foul ball! Foul ball? Foul ball? Foul ball. Foul ball. I got it! If you want great taste that won't fill you yeah. up and never let you down... Make it two Bud Lights, please. Make it a Bud Light. Hey, you got another ball? You'll be surprised at what you get on the new Subaru Impreza L for just $12,999. Maybe even downright suspicious. So go down to your local Subaru dealership and take a look. Jump up and down on the new smoother suspension. Stroke that galvanized metal. Go ahead, kick a tire. The surprising Impreza from Subaru. It's not just another new car. Kings coach Barry Melrose, who held his team back at the hotel today. No morning skate. I asked him why before the game, Gary and Bill, and he said, it's simple. I just wanted my team to get away from the media, get their minds on what they have to do tonight. Gary? They've got to win. That's it, period. Real simple at this point. Wayne Gretzky on Tomas Sandstrom and Warren Reichel on the line with him. Gretzky on the faceoff, lost that one, cleared out by Guy Carboneau. Carboneau has become very close to Wayne Gretzky. Well, he has, but you know what, Gary? Doc Demers has not disrupted his lineup and his line changes to get him out there. Regular shifts in this in games two, three, and four, Wayne has had 78 of them. Carboneau's only been out there 45 of those 78. That tells you when it's convenient, Demers will match. When it isn't convenient, he will not disrupt. That, too, has worked. Puck freed up in the corner. Canadians trying to get that odd man rush going. Ronan drops it to Brune. Brune back for Ronan. Never got a stick on it. Partially hit. Kelly Rudy blocks that one. On the return shot. Held in. Brace by in front. Ronan. Ronan. Jammed up. Knocked down by Huddy. Huddy's taking his shifts with that knee brace. And he did not get that brace on until warm-ups for this game. Because it came arrived right so late here this afternoon. Reichel clears it out. J.J. Daniel goes back to get it. Shots 2-2 early on. We are four and a half into the first period. LeClaire avoiding Blake that time. But the puck goes over the glass and into the seats. El Morgani also joining us here in Montreal. El? Well, Gary, the Canadians don't want to show any overconfidence. In fact, they have a itinerary for tomorrow. A 10 a.m. flight to L.A. They don't expect to use it. But those numbers are, when they have a chance to clinch at the forms and being in the NHL, they're 11-1. Those are pretty awesome numbers for the Kings to overcome. Gary and Bill? No team has ever won more championships in any major sport than these Canadians. They are going for their 24th Stanley Cup on this, the 100th anniversary of the Cup. Somehow the great theater of sports comes into play more often than not, and it surely does here. Blake brings it in. Blake trying to drop it back. Conacher. Conacher room. Conacher the move. Knocked down. Penalty coming up. Delayed call. Deflected through the crease, and there's the whistle. And the Los Angeles Kings will get the first power play chance of this game. You take a look at Terry Gregson, his second year of working the Stanley Cup Finals, the referee for tonight. Well, one thing the L.A. Kings will not do, they might have changed their game day routine in the morning, but Barry Melrose will not change his team's style, which is attack all the way. Number four, Rob Blake, already skated to the right out of your screen. That means he's in deep offensively. Pat Conacher with a real good move with the blue line to get around his guy, and Matt Schneider had to come up and face him. And when you have to move towards the guy that's coming at you, you almost have to stick your leg out. Schneider didn't have a choice because of a good move by Conacher. So Schneider's gone. Jacques Demers. Montreal Canadiens are going to be short-handed here. 
435 the time of the penalty. The Kings need their power play to be more effective than it has been thus far in this series if they're going to pick up a W. Well, it started out fine. They scored two in the first game, but now they are one for their last 18 on the power play, and that is a complete reversal because the Canadians are now the hot team on the power. Let's see what happens with it. McSorley couldn't hold it in on the return pass to the point. First power play of the game. During these playoffs for the Kings, overall, they have gone 22 for 129 on the power play. Sandstrom leaves it. Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. Desjardins, the poke check, and the hit. He's pinning Gretzky up behind the net, just lets him go. McSorley back to Tomas Sandstrom. Sandstrom, they've got Robitaille in front of the net. Tomas Sandstrom waiting, a minute 23. They want to be patient on the power play. They get Gretzky up circle-wise. Shot McSorley wide of the net. Rebound off the back of it. Tomas Sandstrom back to Gretzky. Robitaille in front. The Robitaille batted twice in the air. Kurt Muller's got it. Muller clears the zone. Gosh, Gary, they were patient and cool. If they can get the puck down low to Wayne Gretzky, something is always going to happen for the Kings. And the Canadians don't cheat to Wayne Gretzky. But you know what? He's not playing as close to the net as he usually does. When they're in their box, he moves to the side. McSorley's shot is blocked to the corner by Guy Carbido. Kurt Muller again. There's the zone. 49 seconds remaining on the power play chance. No score. 14-10 to go in the first period. McSorley. Marty McSorley, every time the puck is touched here, these Canadian fans on the front of their seats are up and out of them. They are ready for the big party here in Montreal tonight. Donnelly, but both these teams know, and the fans know, because of the tightness of these games of three overtimes, it is five from over. 27 left on the power play. Well, we pointed out in game four that the Montreal Canadiens lead in just about every second number, every category of second numbers, such as block shots, and Guy Carboneau has led the way in this entire series. Block shot number 51 for the Montreal Canadiens came on the penalty kill. Here's the big shot walking into it. Marty McSorley with his big blast, and Carboneau was able to get his stick in front of it and deflect it wide. The LA Kings have blocked 23, and Guy Carboneau and Montreal Canadiens have blocked 51 shots. That is part of why they have been so terrific on their penalty killing. Amazing, isn't it? And Carboneau, you know, you think Carboneau is out of the play, too. So you wind up, you take your big wind up, which is your most time consuming wind up, or you can't underestimate his quickness still because he almost always gets a piece of it. Power play still underway here for Los Angeles with 23 seconds left to go on it. Kelly Rudy holding it up behind the net. Blocked by Brunet. Brunet short handed. Muller racing and went by it. Blake has got it. 10 left on the power play. Blake to Granado. Granado. Back for Blake, hit the side of the net with it. Blake ended up down low, couldn't control the puck, and J.J. Daniel clears it, and that will do it. Los Angeles 0 for 1 on the power play, and 3 for 23 in this series. Back to center ice. Dumped in, Blake's got it. Blake drops it off, Canadiens are now back to full strength. Intercepted by Bellows, Bellows bangs it off the boards. Kelly Rudy holding it up behind the net. Jitnik coming back to get it. Jitnik up for Reichel. Ahead for Shuchuk. Shuchuk with Curry and Blake. Trying to create the uh, odd man. Can't do it. Canadians get back. At the line, Shuchuk. His shot blocked into the corner. Held on to by Yari Curry as he swept it in deep to Blake. Blake trying to center and hit the net again. Rebound, LeBeau. LeBeau up along the boards. Played out of the zone down Foose. Wide side, Bellows. Bellows coming in front. Shot, Bellows saved Rudy. Rebound kicked out deep. And Shuchuk clears. Bellows had a two-on-one. Eric Desjardins went with him all the way. Good shot selection, though, by Brian Bellows. He is the leading goal scorer. Desjardins was on his backhand. He might as well shoot. Bellows just swings it in. Canadians and Kings both change it up on the fly. 12-26 left here in the first. 3-3 three, three the shots. No score. Redliner by Marty McSorley. Patrick Wad dropped it off. Lyle Odeline's got it. Odeline up for Dion. Gilbert Dion. Intercepted and sent right back in by Tony Granado. Granado getting plenty of ice time. Carson is out there with him now on this line. We kind of figured, or kind of figured Jimmy Carson would get some playing time because he played well. Shot save made by Kelly Rudy and Gary Lehman. Conacher avoiding the hit of DiPietro. Pat Conacher coming around the net, leaves it for Marty McSorley. Up, Dion tried to block it, could not. Could have been played, so they wave off the ice. Wild back to get it. Matthew Snyder, Odeline up at center. They try and catch the Kings in a change. Odeline jams it in. He avoided the hit that time of Robitaille after he got rid of it. Charlie Huddy doesn't avoid. DiPietro, center. Dion shot, saved by Rudy. Bounced off the stick. Perfect positioning, though, by Kelly Rudy. Tomas Sandstrom to Gretzky. Gretzky, Sandstrom, and Robitaille. Sandstrom, it got caught in the skates of Gary Lehman. Up for DiPietro, knocked away Sador. 
DiPietro gets it back, but he's alone. Waiting for help. He's got Dion cutting in. Played back Sador. Sador, Gilbert Dion gives him the bump, knocked him down. Dion got the puck. DiPietro back in the corner for Ed Ronan. Ronan dumps it. Charlie Huddy around the boards. Robitaille, Brisebois. Brisebois held it in. Dion couldn't get it. Ronan does. Lost it. Cleared out. Montreal will get back on side. Again, changes going on. J.J. Daniel back. Tipped in. Canadians change it up. Boy, Charlie Huddy is laboring, but he's still working at getting up on the play. You know, the, the gap is the distance between the defenseman and the forwards. If Charlie Huddy can't keep that gap small by getting up close to his forwards in the rush, Montreal's going to be able to counterattack on his side, and he's really laboring. He heads to the bench right now. E. Carbono. Carbono for Ronan. Ronan kicking at it. Had Blake in front of him. Banged in the Carbono, but Blake was there. Round the boards for Donnelly. Donnelly with Corey Millen and Gary Shuchuk. Lines continually being uh, changed here in the first period as far as Los Angeles and personnel are concerned. Darren Melrose mixing and matching. LeClaire intercepts and sends it in. Rudy gets back to get it. No score. Game rolling along with 10-12 left to go in the first. Free at center. Matthew Schneider comes back to get it. And again, the Kings change it up. Schneider from his own end to Bellows. Bellows, Kirk Miller in front of him. LeClaire on the right wing side. LeClaire going to the corner. Dumped by Yari Curry. LeClaire went over to get it. Got stood up. The battle. Loose puck. Throws free. Hardy had it and lost it. LeClaire got him. Miller shot. Saved by Rudy. Kirk Miller open. Kelly Rudy making some big saves early on here. There have been some good scoring chances for the Canadiens. Near side, Granado. Montreal changing it up on the fly. Blake, crowd applauds as Granado got hit by Keane behind the play. Gary Curry brings it in. Curry drops it. Robitaille. Stick picked up by Don Poots. Back to the point. Penalty coming up. Delayed call. It's going to be on the Canadiens. McSorley. Extra skater is out there. Gretzky centering pass. Knocked down. Held on to Mark Hardy. Still a delayed call here. Extra skater. Hardy shot. Tipped wide of the net by Robitaille. Keane will touch it up. And there's the whistle. Another power play coming for the Kings. You know, a lot of fellows my age are afraid of change. Me, I'm impressed by new technology, like this car, Subaru Impreza. It's new thinking in building a car, not radical change, advancements. My friends might not appreciate them. You might, uh, you don't know me, but you might listen. Or maybe, like my friends, you don't like change. Fair enough. A twin blade from Bic? What's in it for me? I'm a Bic man. Bic man. It's different. A twin for normal skin and a twin for sensitive, right? I'm a Bic man. I'm a sensitive guy, right? So I tried it. Bic man. It's good. It's I'm great. A big man. The Bic Twin Select. Normal, sensitive. It really blew me away. It made a Bic man out of me. I'm a Bic man. the better scoring chances that belong to the Montreal Canadiens. Watch Kirk Muller, number 11, move back out to the faceoff dot and away from the two Kings that are in front of the net. The Kings are double covering in front, and that's why nobody could get to Kirk Muller right up off of Kelly Rudy's shoulder. And a penalty charging on Keane. Second power play of the game for the Kings. No score here in the first. Gretzky's got it. Gretzky, they'll try and set Robitaille up in front as he's banging away in front of the net. And I mean banging away. Ian Desjardins, Gretzky in, Gretzky, the shot, tipped wide. Robitaille was there, Tomas Sandstrom trying to get it back to him. Gretzky, and at 34 in the advantage for the Kings. Sorley back at the point. Gretzky in front for Robitaille, blocked again behind the net. J.J. Daniel got that one, Brene knocked down by Sador. Gretzky, where he loves to work from, where he's made history, right there behind the net. McSorley sneaks in near side. Gretzky started for him, bounces it off Wah. Gretzky over to get it in the corner. Back to McSorley. Minute 11 on the power play. Gretzky, McSorley, both back. Now they regain their positioning as Sador comes back out. There's Sador. Over to McSorley. Gretzky. 
Kentucky looking down low. Robitaille shot save made by Y. He knew where that was going to come. Uh, the LA Kings are doing something different on their power play. They're overloading right in front of Patrick Y. They always have had one guy there in this power play, either Robitaille or Sandstrom. But that last chance, Robitaille quickly moved to the front and they created a two-on-one on Eric Desjardins. That's what the Kings are going to obviously try to do. Take some of Patrick Waugh's sight lines away. Overload in front. The pretty plays aren't working. Get the ugly ones going. Odeline was able to clear the puck. 30 seconds left on the power play for the Kings. Their second of the game. Lyle Odeline to stand up on Tony Granado. Matthew Snyder, the hard wraparound. Blake near side holds it in. Blake dumps it down low. Carson out. Carson right there working the power play. Finally got a chance after sitting up six in a row in the last game. Carson was back and he played well. Kings down to 10 on the power play. Near side, Shitnick the shot. Deflected right in on Waugh by Carson, and he made the save again. In the corner, Ronan does battle with Schneider. Penalty is over. The Kings are 0 for 2, and a penalty coming in Los Angeles. Tony Granado took the skates up from under Matthew Schneider. Elegant, informal family dining. Delicious gourmet cuisine. Over 100 menu items to choose from. Very affordable prices. The Edna Hotel, 5th Avenue in Arnold. This month, look for these tasty dinner specials. Lamb fajitas. Shrimp Veracruz style. Chicken fajitas. Texas Red Hot Chili. And for dessert, Kahlua Pie. Make your Father's Day reservations today. Dear parents, even if your car is working perfectly, it's still a dangerous place for a child who doesn't have a car seat. So through Project Safe Baby, Midas is making it easy for everyone to afford a Century car seat for just $42. Our cost. You see, Project Safe Baby isn't about making a profit. It's about making cars safer for children everywhere. That's the Midas way, the way it should be. Never fails. The LA Kings come close on their power play, and now they have to kill one. Tony Granado was just getting a little frustrated trying to get the puck away from Matt Schneider and pull his feet out from under him. And you know, Gary, you have to think that the lead is important for the LA Kings. When Montreal has the lead, at least they don't have to stray from their game plan. And in the last three games, the LA Kings have only led for 10 minutes and 15 seconds. Three games. And the team that scores first is one, period. Breeze wide is on in. Pat Conacher poked away. Conacher trying to get it back. Couldn't. Reichel got dumped by Breeze Bois. Short-handed effort. LeBeau. Donfus. Donfus in. Donfus on the power play. Shot was blocked. Puck rolls up the boards. Bellows holds it in. Bellows shot blocked. Kicked ahead. Donfus. Bellows got him down. Had no angle. Bellows back. Oh. And it comes out of the zone. He made a blind pass, assuming that Eric Desjardins was back in the point, and he wasn't there. Desjardins had tried to sneak in. Montreal on the power play, changing up here with a minute four left on it. It's amazing when that when that goal is wide open, how it tends to act as a magnet, even for the defense when everybody is edging towards it. You could be at the other goal line, you'd still try and move in. Lauer gets hit in the face, no call as Huddy got the stick up on him. Back for Schneider. Schneider drops it, Bellows, Muller. Muller had it blocked. Charlie Huddy clears it out of the zone. A medial collateral ligament problem generally keeps athletes out of work for about six weeks. He's been out for one day. Well, he's been out for one game, but he, but he, st he turned 34 last week in the middle of this series, so his conditioning isn't even a problem. He hasn't skated for four days. Snyder tried to drop it in. J.J. Daniel steps up, 24 left on the Canadiens' advantage. There's Muller. Muller for Dion, but it hit the side of the net and went behind it. Taken by Matthew Snyder. Snyder looking as Bruce Wild with him. Snyder's shot deflected off Dampus high. Honey goes over to get it. Clears it out, and only 10 seconds left on the Los Angeles penalty. So the Montreal Canadiens, whose power play has not exactly sparkled in the playoffs, 14 for 79. They are now 14 for 80. Kurt Muller over to get it. Waters the hit. We're back to even strength. But they're looking at recent history, which says three of the last eight power plays they have converted on. That's what is important to the Canadians. Taken by Waters back in his own end. No score. Hit by LeClaire. Lehman. Can it be LeClaire setting up another goal? Shot. Yes! Paul DiPietro! What 
a hit by John LeClaire. He wiped out Tim Waters. Good things happen when you hit deep in the zone. Tim Waters went to LeClaire to try and tie him up, and nobody could get to Gary Lehman. Give Lehman a lot of credit. He didn't panic. He didn't try the sharp angle shot. He waited for DiPietro to get in place. Waters down. Lehman with the puck. Waiting, waiting. Here comes his guy now. Paul DiPietro followed Shuchuk as Shuchuk moved towards LeClaire. No mistake. No mistake at all for Paul DiPietro. There is Gary Lehman in the doghouse, in the playoffs, out of the stands, and into the lineup this series. And he made a terrific play on that one. The Canadians, when they've scored first, they've won. They lead one to nothing. John LeClaire already has three game-winning goals this year. Down first. Save Rudy. Rebound. Kicked away. Conacher's got it. Right off the faceoff. Blake coming the other way. Sends it into the corner. LeClaire, two consecutive overtime game-winning goals in the last two games. Helps set up this one. And it is now a 1-0 Montreal lead as they go for the Cup. You know what's interesting about LeClaire's assist on that goal? And I don't even know if he touched the puck, but he should get credit for an assist. He only had two points in this round. Both of them were the overtime goals. No assists until that one. Keen to LeBeau. Knocked away from him to Blake. 15-10, the time of the goal. DiPietro gets his seventh of the playoffs, his first of this series. Lehman and LeClaire pick up the assist. Shitnik comes to center. Sends it in block. Keen's got it. Keen taken down at center. Good play by Alexei Zhitnik. Zhitnik back in. But so are the Canadiens. Wah knocks it away. Zhitnik again trying to center. Had it blocked. Comes back to the point. Huddy. Huddy trying to send it in. And of course it hit Guy Carbono. Talk about magnets. 3.30 left to go in this first period. 8-7 the shots on goal right now in favor of the Kings. But the 1-0 lead goes to the Canadiens. Tomas Sandstrom. Sandstrom leaves it. Gretzky sends it in. Why going back to play it. Takes a look around. Had a little trouble deciding what to do with that one. Brisebois back to help out. Gretzky moves over on him. Comes to Ronan. Ronan tips it to center. Brunet. Brunet brings it. Canadiens change it. Ronan on the right. Brunet shot. Blocked. Ronan turn around. Blocked by Gretzky. Gretzky was right behind him. Came through and just put his stick down on the puck. Played by Charlie Huddy. How do you see having trouble trying to get wound up there? Generate any speed with that brace on that knee. Lyle Odeline just out of the zone by Granado. Bellows. Save made by Kelly Rudy. And he hangs on. Canadians up 1-0. My daughter, she's going to college. She needs a car. So we talked. She wanted this. She wanted that. She wanted ABS brakes. She's a very bright girl. So she looked, and she found a new Subaru Impreza. Well, I can't talk to her about a car, because I'm usually the cynic. But this Impreza left me speechless. So now I say things like, aren't you glad I told you about the new Impreza? And she says, Dad, you're employing revisionist history. Like I said, she's a very bright girl. Hmm. What? A guard lock. Oh, very scary. Good stuff. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. <laughs> it was 1 0 Montreal when Vincent Dampus had this breakaway. Goaltenders, when you come this far in the playoffs, have to know how to hold you in at the right time. And with his team trailing 1 0. 2 nothing would have been a sizable hole here. Even if it creeps into four or five players' minds that maybe destiny is on the Montreal Canadiens side and they are going to win this game. If four or five LA Kings down 2 nothing on a Vincent Dompu's goal, think that. Another goal, a couple other guys fall into that thinking pattern. Boy, oh boy, it's tough to overcome a couple of goal lead when you're down three games to one. It's tough any time. That's when you start assigning numbers for who gets the cup and what portion of the carry. Behind the net. Crowd as McSorley and LeClaire were going at it behind the play. They separated themselves, though. Cleared up near side. Nobody there. Hardy's pass goes into the zone. And back to get in Matthew Schneider. And that is going to be an icing call. Our Budweiser Stanley Cup summary as we are here in game five. But 
Montreal. You take a look at a record that is going to stand, I think, for a long time. LeClaire, seventh player in history to score overtime goals in consecutive games. And Gretzky, second all-time with 53 points during the final series in his career. Before Stanley comes to his credit, of course. Going after another one here. There's the man. And they say there's not a superstar on this team. Well, wait a minute. Paul DiPietro this morning said to me, Patrick Waugh is our Wayne Gretzky. As simple as that. That's a Hall of Famer. Just waiting. And only 27 years old with a lot of W's left in front of him the way he's playing right now. 9-2-8 save percentage in the playoffs. Second only to Curtis Joseph who faced all the pucks ever made in Canada and the United States during the playoffs this season, even though they didn't last that long. DiPietro. And Yari Curry on the faceoff. Faceoffs have been an area where the Montreal Canadiens have dominated. Their top four are all above 500 in faceoffs. LA's top four all below. Granado end up on the boards. It's an interesting story. Donald Dufresne right there wearing number 34. This is the first game he's played, Bill. And what a special, what a special thought process by the Canadiens to get him into the game. Well, he would not have gotten his name on the Stanley Cup if he had not gotten into at least one game because he only played 32 games during the regular season. You have to play 40. Jock Demers didn't want to do anything to let the L.A. Kings think that he thought this series was over, but he also was torn with his conscience telling him, this guy served me well during the regular season. If we win it, I want his name on the Cup. So he's in the lineup. Offside. There is a whistle there somewhere. And Montreal took the shot after the whistle, and the Kings don't like it. I don't think anybody heard that, though. Everybody kept on going on a, an offside whistle. It just didn't pierce the crowd. Al Gilbert Dion with the beard. His brother Marcel, who starred for so many years as a member of the L.A. Kings, never made it past the second round of the playoffs. And here is his junior brother by 19 years. Of trying to wrap it up here in the Montreal Forum. I wonder if Marcel says, gosh, there's something to be said for timing and just being in the right place at the right time. Talked to Marcel yesterday. He made an interesting point, which I hadn't really thought much about. He said, he said, you know, they were telling me, I, I've listened all my career about how fighting's necessary in the game of hockey. He said, I've been watching the Stanley Cup playoffs this year. Don't tell me fighting's necessary to see great hockey. Different strokes. There's Donald Dufresne, man, we talked about in the lineup. Jacques Demers was also faced with the same situation concerning Jesse Belanger, another player that played for him on and off during the regular season. And Jacques is the kind of guy that would like to serve everybody, but his number one priority is obviously winning this hockey game and not doing anything to get the L.A. Kings revved up. So it was kind of quietly done. Yeah, Donald exactly. Dufresne suddenly showed up. There was a little article in the corner of the, of the Journal de Montréal, which is the French newspaper that is the ab absolute hockey Bible. Every page has multiple articles. There was just a very tiny French article about the possibility of Donald Dufresne playing in this game. He probably would have preferred even that didn't go in. I'm sure, I'm sure he would have. It's a wonderful thing to do. Of course, there's a risk involved. Brunet, Brunet pinned up by Blake. Puck came free along the boards, though. Gretzky was able to dig it out. Gretzky will lead the charge over to Sandstrom. Broken up Matthew Schneider, and that creates the offside. And a frustrated Wayne Gretzky heads back out for yet another faceoff at center. That's what's happened on attempted rushes by the Kings in this series. Minute 10 to our first intermission. And we'll send you back to our studios. And during our first intermission, Gretzky's chances. We'll take a look at those. And yes, Huddy is playing injured. We'll be back there with Jim and John. All in a minute 10. Yep, Charlie Huddy playing hurt. You got to play hurt. Oh, what a hit. Rob Blake again on D. Carbono. And it looked like he kept his elbow down. Rob Blake has been nothing short of a human bulldozer in this series. And he hits so high, Gary. He, he, he seems to get good leverage. He digs in with his skates. And he hits up high so that when he hits you, he just tips you over immediately. When guys go down, they just don't go down. I mean, they get slammed to the ice. Yeah, that's just what happens. He does tip you over. One minute left to go in the first period. Canadians leading. Dion get hit by Zhitnik that time. He felt that one. Under a minute left here. Intercepted. Intended for Ronan. Kicked away from Dion again. Gilbert Dion tried to bang it in. Ronan will play it back at center. Only one up on the board here. That was the setup and the good hit by LeClaire. DiPietro from Lehman and LeClaire. Zhitnik. And now Guy Carbono and Blake. And guess what? The veteran won this matchup. Rob Blake has manhandled Guy Carbono in this 
shift. That replay that we showed you was the second time he flattened him, but this time he got the punch going. The right hand right into the mush of Guy Carboneau. See Carboneau go back at him? Watch Blake. Uh-uh-uh. No, sir, baby, not this time of year. So Rob Blake has to sit for a couple. 36.7 seconds to go in the period. It's a great way to finish a period and a great way for the Canadians to start the second period. Rob Blake will head out. Barry Melrose team that must win to keep this series alive and send it back for a game on Saturday is behind 1-0. Carbono and that shield and helmet driven right into the side of his head. You know what, Gary? I I'm not sure that that blood isn't from that hit that we replayed in the corner because that was a far more violent hit than the... Than the it could have been from that one, but it could have been one of three that I saw. We've had enough. Well, yeah, but guess what? He doesn't mind. Just like Tim Waters with his... 35 stitches for the Kings and Daryl Sador his 32 stitches in the mouth in this series. E. Carbon will take this. That hit him almost under the chin and on the other side, which leads me to believe that that cut happened earlier. It's a pretty good rocket, huh? You bet. Wow. Still talking here in front of the scorers table. Gregson. Tomas Sandstrom had gotten into an argument behind the play. It had to be separated in the corner and I think there are going to be extra penalties picked up here. Sandstrom is heading to the dressing room. That would indicate maybe a misconduct. Sandstrom was over in the corner after everything had, had ended and was in a stand-up argument over there. In fact, looked like there was going to be a fight, but it's the old situation and nobody wants to be thrown out of the game, so both held on to their gloves and stick. You know what, Gary? The Montreal Canadiens still think that Marty McSorley is playing with an illegal stick. In game four, he dropped his stick in the third period. It fell out of his hands right in front of the Montreal bench with the curved part up. They took a look at it. They didn't grab it, but they looked at it, and a number of them said after the game, Marty McSorley is still playing with an illegal stick, and that's something we can call if we feel we have to. All roughing penalties picked up here, so Blake, Sandstrom, and Ronan all pick up roughing. That means the power play still goes to the Canadiens. Intercepted by Marty McSorley, 20 seconds left to go here in the first period. Gretzky will send it up ice. Los Angeles Kings, six shorthanded goals in the playoffs, but they've not been able to do much of that here against Montreal. Only one in this series. Sent into the corner. McSorley over to get it. Jams it up. Not out. Domfus holds it in. There's time. Centering pass blocked by McSorley. Sent it again off Kelly Rudy's stick, and that's the first. And the Montreal Canadiens are just two periods away from their 24th Stanley Cup. If they can continue to lead, they've got it. one nothing, John. All right, Gary and Bill, thanks a lot. The Los Angeles Kings coming out strong, though, but Montreal, keep this in mind. They have not trailed after the first period since Game 2 of the series against the New York Islanders. So they still have the lead in this one, one to nothing. Back with more in just a moment, John Davidson and Jim Schoenfeld with their characterization of the first period. We'll also take a look at some of the great goaltending. Meanwhile, goaltender... Kelly Rudy could not stop this one from Di Pietro. It's over top of his shoulder in, and it's one to nothing. You can feel it deep inside. Dedication and a real sense of pride. And you're giving it your best. Proud to be a Budweiser. Proud to be a Budweiser. dreams. One day, they'll be ready for college. Life insurance from the Farmers Insurance Group can help send them on their way. Because life insurance can protect your family now, while you put money away that will grow for college later on. Farmers Life Insurance. For safety today and security tomorrow. Farmers Insurance Group. For life. If you can dream it, the rebel can do it. Now, EOS Rebel from Canon has more power to create images, not just snapshots. Image is everything. EOS Rebel and Rebel S from Canon. So advanced, it's simple. Dave Johnson, U.S. decathlete. The trick is knowing what to sweat and what to let go. That's what performance is all about. 
That's why I like this stuff. It's got performance written all over it. Shampoo and conditioner in one, Pert Plus. It always gives me exactly what I'm after. Hair that looks great without a lot of fuss. Pert Plus, also in dandruff control. There are very simple things I want from a car. I want a car to run good. I want a car to look good. I like words like reliable, dependable, trustworthy, and I want it to look good. Did I say that already? I want a car I can trust. Does that seem like such a terrible thing? So I bought this new Impreza. It's got everything I just said, and it's a Subaru. I've taken care of things all my life, and I don't want to have to take care of a car. But, um, I locked my keys in the car. Welcome back. It's game number five. Montreal trying to clinch it tonight. They have a one to nothing lead over the Los Angeles Kings. And again, we started with Wayne Gretzky at the beginning of the night. It's hard to imagine how many points Wayne might have if everybody scored on every opportunity he gave them. Yeah, and in a team sport, everybody has a certain role. You know, I had a coach who used to say the tap dancers dance, the lead singers sing. Well, Wayne is a playmaker. He's been making brilliant plays all the way back to game four. He's putting the puck on the tape, and all you have to do is get open, get in a position, and you know it's going to be there. Here he's going to drive two Canadians to him. Watch a little faster. Zidnick, good scoring chance, another chance in the rebound, but they don't put it in the net. That was last game. Here we are tonight. The great one again. Watch this pass, fools. Everybody except Patrick Waugh with a little pass there to Granado. Wayne's going to set up here for the one-timer at the point. There's McSorley. Just the right velocity. Gives him a chance to get it away. Behind the net, the puck always seems to come to him. Right through the crease. Can't get it past Waugh. He keeps setting guys up. They just cannot score. Watch this. He's going to try to hit Robitaille for the tip in. And here's Wayne. Look at Robitaille in front of the. There it is. Off the leg, but wide of the net again. So the great one doing everything he's supposed to do, people have to score goals. When, when you're that good at getting the puck on the stick, it's almost by accident you should get some goals, and they just aren't scoring any. Yeah, you would think so, although Patrick Waugh is taking away the accident. He has accident insurance, if you will. Waugh's played well. Kelly Rudy's played great. Let's take a look back at some of the outstanding goaltending in the first four games of this series. J.D., you have been there, 1979, against the Montreal Canadiens in the Stanley Cup Final. The pressure is incredible, and you were in a similar situation as Kelly Rudy. Bringing up bad memories again, <laughs> huh, John? Win the first one, lose four straight, huh? <laughs> I, I just, in watching Kelly Rudy play right now and seeing how well he came through again in the first period, even though his team's down one nothing, I, I think it's a remarkable situation. He was going into the playoffs as the sore spot with Los Angeles, and that was to be their goaltending. Well, it's turned out the other way around. He's been the guy that they've counted on. He's played well all the way through, and what's better than anything else, I think, for Kelly Rudy is he now has respect around the National Hockey League. Patrick Waugh, we up, we've known how great he's been. However, the last couple of seasons, he's not had great playoffs, and watching him perform here, I think that he wants to be, and I don't doubt he will be, the first $3 million goaltender in the history of the game. Yeah, the thing about Waugh is, is, you know, once the game is on the line, once they blow their lead, the game's tied. He seems to shut the door. He gives his team a chance to win every game they're in because he just stops allowing goals either in the third period or in overtime. When you have goaltending like that, sooner or later, you're going to bank one in. And that's what the Canadians have done, not only in this series, but throughout the playoffs. Yeah, it has been tremendous goaltending throughout this series. We'll see it continue as we move into the second period. The Montreal Canadiens and Los Angeles Kings. Deja vu, uh, Patrick Orois. 86, he won the Conn Smythe Trophy as the outstanding player in the playoffs. You see what he did against the Calgary Flames. He's doing it again this year, and he could be headed to another Conn Smythe.
beyond the common car dealer and venture into Verona, where the price brings you in and the service brings you back to Verona Jeep Eagle. Receive personalized service and on-the-spot financing on every make of exciting Jeep sport vehicles, luxurious Eagle automobiles, and used cars. With their Nobody Sells for Less policy, traveling in style is made extremely affordable. Family-owned Verona Jeep Eagle has achieved a high level of customer loyalty by serving the area for over 30 years at the same location. Verona Jeep Eagle, two convenient locations, Allegheny River Boulevard and Verona Road, Penn Hills. Calling all sports cards collectors. Sports Cards R Us in Atrona Heights offers a complete line of sports and entertainment cards for collectors of all ages with over a million cards to choose from. Sports Cards R Us has the best variety in the area. We can assist you in putting together that perfect collector set or help you build your collection. We also have t-shirts, sweatshirts, racing collectibles, baseball and hockey memorabilia. Sports Cards R Us in Atrona Heights. Open seven days a week for your convenience. thrive on the pressure. Others never get used to it. But if you play the game, this is the place to be. It's the U.S. Open, where for two weeks each year, the whole world watches every win, loss, tie break, and heartbreak. But if you go, get ready for excitement and pull out your Visa card. Because the Open will take you to the edge of your seat, but they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. The scenery is majestic. Your camera is poised. You're struck by the beauty of the mountain. And then you're struck by the mountain. Why risk your camera when you can use ours? Fuji Quick Snap, one time use cameras. Welcome back. The second period is straight ahead in a one nothing hockey game. We were a little bit surprised when we saw Charlie Huddy on the ice, at least as far as uh, we thought that he might be out for the series with a knee injury. Well, a sprained knee, certainly you would think he would be out for that period of time. Charlie Huddy was injured earlier in the series. He took a real hard hit from Keene of Montreal, and you'll see the leg right there get jammed towards the inside. His right knee joint was the joint with a the problem. There's been a lot of companies now that become involved with trying to improve sports medicine, and one of them, a Smith & Nephew Company out of Carlsbad, California, have come up with this knee brace, and this is the exact brace or make a brace that uh, Charlie Huddy is using for this game. Now, your leg slides in here it does not allow the leg to hyperextend the knee joint and also the knee joint is put right in here and it can't be pushed sideways with all that uh, firm support this thing only weighs 18 ounces it's made of carbon fiber and i think that's the stuff they make uh, race cars out of for the indianapolis 500 price 800 bucks but if you're a hockey player and you want to make a living in this sport these things are well worth it the, the thing that i found quite interesting guys is in talking to the los angeles doctors during the playoffs uh, Dr. Kavitney, he was telling me that instead of taking injuries such as a cracked rib or a fractured rib and taking the needle and when they freeze it up so the player can play, they used to put the needle around the, the fracture and block the nerve. Well, they've come up with something new. And what it is, is it's a solution they put in the syringe and they jab it into the thigh. And it stings. Gretzky had it a number of times because he played with a cracked rib. He said it stung for three or four seconds and then everything was fine. And whatever they have come up with, a new idea, it is working for injuries throughout the body. And it's, it's uh, you look at players like Huddy playing tonight, Pat Conacher played with a bad groin, and you had Gretzky with the rib. Something new, and it may uh, be turning sports around. Just imagine, you guys might have been able to play another <laughs> 10 years or so. Yeah. Yeah, you might be Who playing right now. Uh, I should rather be here with you. We the, want to be with you. <laughs> All right, we'll continue with more in just a moment. Yeah. Wayne Gretzky setting up Granado here. Patrick Waugh equal to the task. It's one nothing. and all, where celebration is born.
for all of you with the courage to go it alone. To put your future on the line and your name on the door, there's the corporate card from American Express. Use it for all your business expenses. We'll organize them by category and even provide records of charges. It's a great way for any company to get a handle on costs. Call 1-800-SUCCESS. The corporate card to your success. Pittsburgh, legendary for tough steel, is legendary for an even tougher paint. Pittsburgh paints. Paints that smooth on easily, cover completely, and dry quickly to a lasting sheen. You put a lot of pride into your home. Protect it with a paint legendary for toughness. Pittsburgh paints. You work too hard to paint with anything less. Join us tonight following Sports Center when we will either bury the Los Angeles Kings or and celebrate the Montreal Canadiens or look ahead to a game six, which would be Saturday at 8.30 Eastern time. We'll find out in the next two periods. The scene you've watched a thousand times where the game comes down to one last hope. The kid who's ridden the bench all year. If this gets you choked up in the movies, imagine when it really happens here on the fields of Little League. No wonder Ponderosa is so proud to be named the official training table of Little League Baseball. To celebrate, everyone who comes in for this card will get great values and even free meals all summer at Ponderosa. Today's car buyer can take a beating when purchasing a new or used vehicle. At United Chevrolet Geo, we want to change the relationship between dealer and buyer for the better, starting with service. At United Chevrolet Geo, we're price competitive and customer oriented. We listen to what you have to say and we like to take the time to exchange information rather than rush a sale. In the last 17 years, we've delivered over 22,000 cars. Top professional salespeople, service, and a top line of Chevrolet Geo products makes us the top choice for a new or used car or truck. Stop in today. ESPN's presentation of the Stanley Cup Finals is brought to you by Fuji Quick Snap One-Time Use Cameras. Fuji, a new way of seeing things. Back with you in Montreal, Gary Thornville, Clement, one nothing. The Canadiens are leading the Kings at the end of the first period. A victory by the Canadiens, and the Cup is theirs yet one more time. Well, you can say one thing about this series. Very little has changed, Bill. The philosophies, you do what they were going in. It's try and beat us at our own game. Well, we also knew that Patrick Waugh was hot coming into this series. Not only hot uh, as it goes as far as goaltenders are concerned, but technically he was perfect coming in. And the only way the L.A. Kings, I think, now can hope to beat him is perhaps on their power play because they weren't even able to drive the net at even strength. They had good scoring chances on their power play in the first period. Here, Gretzky to Robitaille. They worked a two-on-one and Jay on J.J. Daniel. Good scoring opportunity, but sharp angle. Another one, two-on-one with number 43, Breeze Ball, going to the far side of the net. Gretzky dropped it to Tony Granato. The thing about Patrick Waugh that you notice when you watch him is that even difficult saves look easy. So when you watch Patrick Waugh play, I don't think you can tell the difference between an easy save and a tough save because they all look easy to him. And on the power plays, Patrick Waugh denied on chances by the Los Angeles Kings. They went 0 for 2. Montreal 0 for 1. Check in with Tom. Cap, the first period's been a problem in that you've fallen behind the last three games. Are you satisfied with the way the team played this first period? Oh, real satisfied. Uh, yeah, we, we played real hard. We played physical the way we wanted to. Uh, we've got a lot of fight left in us, and uh, we just have to stop putting it in the net. Well, now the big question is, how do you beat Patrick Waugh? One of your power plays, Jimmy Carson had a great deflection, and Waugh was there again. Well, we're going to try to work it low, and uh, hopefully the, the belt box will collapse, and we'll be able to hit one of the defensemen to just jam the net and hope for a rebound. But, uh, you know, we're real pleased. We just have to take one period at a time in the situation that we're in and, and, and try to out-battle right. So I'm talking with Cap Raider as the Los Angeles Kings were coming out on the ice. There you see Patrick Waugh's numbers, the saves, and the shots faced. They did. The Kings did have some decent opportunities. It has got to be a mighty frustrating situation right now for this Los Angeles team, which loves to run and gun. They're still averaging four goals per game here in the playoffs this season, but not in this series. Power play underway here for the Canadiens. Blake in the box with a minute nine left on his penalty. Montreal 0 for 1 on the power play. Second chance, Desjardins wide. Pat Conacher in the penalty killing unit kicks it out of the zone. Desjardins back to get it. Dom Foose out there with it. 
First period shots were 10-7 in favor of the Canadiens. Matthew Snyder's got it. 50 seconds remaining on the power play for the Canadians. Damfus over to Bellows. Bellows, Damfus, and Muller up front. Bellows for Damfus deflected back to Snyder. Snyder's tried to center. Good read on that. Kicked out of the zone by Charlie Huddy. Huddy's out there in the penalty killing unit. Just doing it all. 30 seconds remaining on this power play chance. Desjardins starts it up ice. You know, every shift, Charlie Huddy has looked stronger. He looked weak in the warm-up. He was really hobbling on his leg. First shift, same thing, but every shift that he's played, he's looked stronger. He looks like he's normal out there. Really playing well. Back out to Schneider. Schneider back for Downfoos. Downfoos. Schneider. Schneider drops it. Brisebois down low. Brisebois trying to center deflected behind the net. He was trying to get it to Downfoos. Yari Curry's got it short-handed. Los Angeles for another six seconds. Gretzky out. Gretzky will bring it in himself. Wayne Gretzky tied up along the line. Centering pass. Only Kurt Muller was there for Montreal. Muller, the penalty is over. Montreal does not convert. They are now 0 for 2, as are the Kings on the power play. Brought in by Brunet. Benoit Brunet with Daryl Sador. Brunet. Nice poke check by Sador. Brunet back to get it. Shot save on Carbono by Kelly Rudy. Rifled in on goal as Guy Carbono is open. Keane tips it in. Great scoring chance right there. Good quick release. Again, Keen shot deflected wide. Rudy was screened. Carbono with Gretzky behind the net. Gary Curry's got it. Curry skating with uh, Gretzky on this line now. They'll head to the bench to change it up. J.J. Daniel back to get it. Touches up for the icing. Just underway here in the second period. Well, the L.A. Kings survived. Now they have to get power plays of their own. As Cap Raider, Barry Melrose's assistant, pointed out, they want to get the puck down low. That's near the goal line and try to hope that the Montreal Canadiens' four penalty killers punch back down and hit a guy coming in from the blue line. But here's Montreal's scoring chance. You know, I'm still wondering if that went off the post. I couldn't tell from that angle. I know you called it a save, and I know you're up 1-0 on me on those in this series. I'm trying to even it. I think that went off the post. You got it. Thanks. Notice that you're into the ice. It's all yours. We're tied. <laughs> Di Pietro has the goal. Deflected back off Robitaille's stick. Robitaille lost it. Beyond to Di Pietro. He was all by his lonesome. Di Pietro centering pass. Blocked to the corner. Bad turnover by the Kings right there. See if they get away with it. Kicked away to Carson. Jimmy Carson working a regular shift. Overskated it. Di Pietro missed it on the short side. Paul Di Pietro a force in this game so far. Marty McSorley starts it out. McSorley drops it. Carson to Robitaille. Robitaille in the middle, McSorley scores! This game is tied! 1-1! But the Canadians aren't arguing it. It looked like it went post to post, but I think it went post to the inside of the net, and Marty McSorley has tied this hockey game. He did a great job of getting up on the play. You can see the two Kings made it a two-on-two. -two. Marty McSorley helped with the overload. It went high off the Patrick Watt. Just watched it go behind him. Never even flinched. Watch it. High off the right post, and then off the last ball. It bounced behind the goal line. It never did enter the net on either side of the post. It wasn't until it bounced on the goal line behind it, then bounced out again, that the goal light went on. They are going to make it interesting, and maybe a little more. Game is tied at 1-1 as Marty McSorley picks up the goal to tie this game. They're going to call upstairs to the video replay judge to determine whether or not it crossed the line. Gary Gregson will talk with him. The video replay judge can make the call on his own or go with what they ruled on the ice. Well, we think we've got this one figured out. Let's see if we're right. Post to post and then bounce. Post to post. Watch where it lands. Oh, it's in there. Isn't that incredible that it bounced behind the line and then took a, took a cam out this way? How'd that happen? It's not in the net yet. Now it is. And it bounced out. Gosh. And you wonder why there's video replay in hockey. I mean, the goal judge and Gregson both had it, though, Gary. The goal judge flicked the light on, and Terry Gregson signaled that it was a goal. And it is still tied at 1 1. That's Marty McSorley's second goal in two games, and both of them have been high. The Kings have only scored three high goals on Patrick Wall. And coming into this game, only 20% of their shots were in the upper half of the net. 80% were in the lower half. The scouting report on Patrick Wall is still weaker high than low. Marty McSorley, he has been a presence physically and a presence here as he's on the board to tie it up. 
Warren Reichel. Reichel shot. Missed it on the short side. Rebound to Jitnik. Jitnik at the point. Did he hold it in? No. A delayed offside call. Damfus has it. Won't matter now. Canadians clear. LeBeau tipped it in the air. Taken by Rob Blake. 2.40 the time of the tying goal. McSorley from Carson and Robitaille. Four in the playoffs for Marty McSorley. And he has picked up two of those in this series. Third around Muller off the dasher. Muller trying to hold it in. Matthew Schneider shot. The flex behind the net. Rebound Damfus. Damfus out there with Muller and Bellows. Four Bellows missed it. Held into over line from Schneider. Shot deflected. Did not get in on Kelly Rudy. Rob Blake was able to block it. Damfus again looking for Bellows. Damfus himself. Muller shot. with the puck behind the net. He tries to wrap around the misfires, but Muller had moved to the front, and I don't know if you noticed on the right of the screen, Brian Bellows had his helmet ripped off and it went into three pieces. The linesmen were picking it up after the goal. Good play by Don Foose because he was being flushed out. Kirk Muller moved to the front, and Gary che or Rob Blake, number four, never really did have him tied up, and the Canadians have regained the lead. So how long did LA even stay in a tied situation? I mean, less than two minutes. 2.40 the time of Mark Sorley's goal, 3.51 the time of the goal by Kirk Muller, his 10th of the playoff, second against the Kings. Now Foos picking up the assists, 3.51, Canadians lead it again, 2-1. In the corner, shot Carbino. Brune, Carbino cutting to the net, Brune cuts to the net, Brune kicks it, couldn't get the shot off, Honey tied him up from behind. Luke Robitaille, Sidor drops it. This is what makes Montreal so frustrating to play against. You have a hard enough time scoring goals, you get one, and it's like, well, our turn, and they come right back and put it on the board. Zidor. Zidor up for Robitaille. Robitaille will drop it back. Lyle Odeline also picking up an assist on that goal by Kirk Muller. Set in, Tomas Sandstrom going back, losing the stick. Matthew Schneider really crunched Sandstrom, and he didn't like it. Puts him in a headlock, but gets away. 